It's kind of funny, growing up um, on my progress reports and my report cards, I always had lack of self-control or lax self-control on um, my report cards. And I never understood what it was. I don't know why. It makes total sense that what it literally means is doesn't like control yourself. I, I, I wasn't controlling myself. So what is your definition of self-control? Now that I know better, my definition is literally controlling myself. That's what self-control is, controlling yourself. So that goes beyond physical. Um, it goes what you think, what you look at, what you watch, what you listen to, what you do, what you say, and in this day and age, what you type, <laughs> social media, um, what you post on Facebook, what you post on Instagram, what you post on YouTube, what you say on all of those things. Um, so self-control is controlling those things. And just to take it a step, another notch, you know, further, um, self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, tells us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Self-control is one of the evidences that you are a Christian. One of the evidences of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Um, where do you lack self-control? <laughs> this is something I need to examine myself about very often. I want to exemplify Christ to the world um, as part of the great commission and displaying the fruit of the spirit is one of the ways to do that so examining ourselves is very very important right now what is your definition of love let's read God's definition of love first Corinthians 13 first starting at verse 4 love hey guys hey I'm gonna start reading and I'm talking here why don't you guys go down to the yard or go to the front yard Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. I know none of us can do this perfectly. But I hope that as we read that, we realize, wow, our definition of love is very far from God's. Um, it is not loving to be unkind. Or let's just use the word hateful instead of unkind. Unkind seems too soft sometimes. The opposite of love is hate. So when we're not loving, we're being hateful, not unloving. We're being hateful. It helps me so much to say words like that to myself instead of, I want to be more kind or I'm being unkind. I want to plaster my sin in my face and say, I am being hateful. And that is more convicting and more real and a little more like, hey, <laughs> this is serious, you know, than unkind, you know? So when we're not being these things, God's definition of love, we're being hateful. That's convicting. I'm going to read Matthew 15, verse 10. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see what whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. What comes out of your mouth? Proverbs 12, chapter 1. Chapter 12, verse 1. <laughs> Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 
verse 3. By the mouth of a fool comes a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Chapter 14, verse 7, same, still in Proverbs. Leave the presence of a fool, for there you do not meet words of knowledge. Chapter 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of fools pours out folly. Verse 4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Verse 5, a fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. Little passages like that, the fool doesn't like to be corrected, but the wise man does, are all throughout Proverbs. And I think it's just to like slap your bottom while you're getting mad, reading all the things that are convicting. And then it's like, hey, you're a fool if you're mad right now. <laughs> this is wisdom. Take it and be glad. Be corrected. Be instructed. If you're mad, you're a fool, you know? Verse 28, chapter 15. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. Sounds like lack of self-control there. Verse 32. Whoever ignores instruction despises himself, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and humility comes before honor. James 3, Taming the Tongue. Verse 5, it's talking about how small of a member the tongue is of the body, yet it controls and can do so much. It is very powerful. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed, and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. My page turned with the wind. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt.